But if you close your eyes What is up everybody? My name is Jack Wynn. This is day number four of the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, day three of on-track action. It is the Pennzoil 400. I'm currently in the process of walking to the Neon Garage. We just got our tickets scanned in. We're going in for the driver's meeting. But we had a little issue getting our tickets scanned. They said we couldn't bring in our metal chairs, which is kind of stupid. We've been bringing them in for the last 10, 11 years or so. We've been bringing them in all weekend, and now we're being told that we can't bring them in. So I'm going off on my own. My parents are dealing with everything there. What a great way to start the weekend. racing here at Penzo 400 for the Las Vegas Motor Speedway.
the other chase.
Bush was also sideways. Eagle, Eagle, Eagle pitched in the back. So it was Haley and Dylan that got together, and then Bush got sideways. We should go hell. From who? Behind him. He was hit in the back.
downside is Blaney got involved. Blaney also got damaged from that one, so that sucks.
but they started spinning.
Showman. I want to know what Larson was doing over at Chastain. South Point 400, Alex Bowman got the win. William Byron second. Ross Chastain in four, uh, third. Uh, so Chevy sweeping the top three positions. Uh, overall, it was a pretty good race. Enjoyed it a lot. Um, these new cars are definitely a handful of drive, as we saw. Um, it's also produced some good racing uh, from what we've seen in Auto Club and today here in Vegas. Um, as you can see, I am fried on my face. My face is completely fried as I've got aloe on my face. Um, but overall, just the whole experience at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway has definitely been lackluster over the last few years that I've been. Um, the fan experience is getting less and less. A lot of the stuff that like was included with Garage Pass and all that has just been really cut short this year. There was a sim racing thing in the Neon Garage that was cut for this year. Um, they took out the driver's meeting in the middle of the Neon Garage as well as allowing the drivers to go up to red carpets and autographs. Uh, this time they just had drivers just walk down for interviews with the Speedway staff and for the uh, Fox Sports uh, staff. Um, and not very many of them were signing autographs. <clears throat> um, I remember when I first went a few years ago, back in 2011, during the race we were able to be right up along the wall 
uh, during qualifying. And then on Sunday, we were able to walk along pit lane, able to go up onto pit road and actually walk along the grid uh, with no special pass needed other than earning a garage pass. Well, over the years, they've cut back more and more restrictions. One year, we were... Um, we weren't able to be along the wall, but we were able to be like right behind the pit boxes and walk down the pit boxes. Um, we were like a few feet away from the pit wall during qualifying and that. And then they just progressively pushed us back further. And we're now within like 10 feet of the media center. Uh, on the front stretch in pit lane. Uh, and you can't even walk the grid or walk behind the pit boxes um, without a special pass where before you even need to. Um, so that's kind of kind of sucky. And then obviously they claim to have taken away the driver's meeting in the Neon Garage and the sim racing because of COVID even though it's been two years since the pandemic has hit. And it's more controlled now. Mask mandates are no longer a thing. Vaccine requirements aren't as heavily needed. So there's really no point to cut back everything. It's honestly getting a little ridiculous as well. Um, and then, of course, the practice thing. They cut practice a lot for this year. <coughs> I have been dealing with sickness the entire day. Where is my water? I just had a mild coughing fit there. Um, but just, uh, like, practice has been cut significantly for the Cup Series and for all the series, really. Because um, before, they would have, like, three or four practices the whole weekend. Um, there were hour-long practices. And cars would be coming in and out of the garage stalls. You were able to be up and getting autographs from the drivers in the neon garage. You come to the little window and slot, stick your program or your diecast car, they'd sit, sign it, you get it back. All that, but with COVID, they didn't have practices for the last two seasons. And then this year they're doing 30 minute practices and then qualifying right afterwards. So the cars aren't really able to go into the garage. They're on pit road. And the drivers really just, they don't come out of their cars during practice. They sit in the cars, let the cars cool down for a bit, then head out to the track again. Uh, so that kind of sucked. Um, and really NASCAR using the whole COVID excuse now is kind of pointless. Uh, with it being now two years. And everything's kind of under control and handled. And like I get Omicron is still out and COVID's still out. But it's not as severe as what it once was. It's more under control now. Um, I mean, it's mainly more like a flu virus than anything. So for them to keep continue to use it as an excuse to, for the tracks especially, to cut down on fan experiences for normal fans, as well as NASCAR to cut down on a lot of stuff to help benefit the teams, is kind of pointless. It sucks. It It's not the best thing. And this is, this is the first time I've been truly disappointed and frustrated with the track and with NASCAR. Um, but I can't complain too much. It's offered some great racing. And just the fact that they got practice and qualifying back is enough to make me happy. It's good to see some of these teams get some work in understanding of their cars before the actual race rather than showing up with what you got and just running it. And if it's not the greatest for the track, well, then you're screwed for the entire race. So, I just like the fact that they've got qualifying and practice back for all series. Um, but we'll see what happens later on this season. That's my kind of little rant from that. But other than that, happy for Bowman. He got the win. He's my probably one of my second favorite drivers in the garage. Um, Turex is a close third, so I was, I was pulling for Turex there, um, uh, towards the end of that race when he was with Bush, and then that caution came out, and then it brought everybody back together, Bowman with Jesse's strategy to take two, same with Larson and Byron, 
And so it was interesting to see that um, just overall the racing around the track was pretty good. I mean, Bell ran away with the lead for the first 30 laps, uh, but didn't run away like massively as compared to some years with the awful aero package that we had. Um, there was some good passing in that. I mean, the cars still spread out a lot, but they were also, it wasn't as spread out as in years past. There was still racing going on. There's still passes being made. I mean, everywhere you looked at that track, there were battles all over the place for position. So it was a good race. Um, can't complain too much about it. Uh, but overall, just... It was a good race. Probably would be back for September for the playoffs. Uh, don't know yet. That one's still up in the air. Uh, but if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to be notified when I upload a new video. And as always, give it a thumbs up if you did like it. Um, and as always, I will see you guys in the very next episode. Peace. Thank you.